So towards the end of last month, rumours started circulating that Charles Leclerc could be on the way out of Ferrari to join fellow strugglers Mercedes, as whenever Hamilton's contract is up for renewal, there's rumours he could be out the door, and then replaced by somebody else. Now, two weeks on from those rumours starting to circulate, they seem to have died down, as both Leclerc and Hamilton seem eager to stay where they are. But this opens up some more questions. So for this video, I thought I'd humour the rumours, because there does seem to be some parallels here that do seem interesting. And actually, maybe, Leclerc could be harming himself the longer he stays at Maranello. But at the same time, is he stuck where he is? Cast your mind back to 2012. There was the breaking news via Eddie Jordan and then the rest of the F1 media that Lewis Hamilton would be leaving McLaren, with whom he'd been with since he was 13 years old, and was then going to go to Mercedes. Something Jeremy Clarkson compared to leaving Manchester United to join West Ham as Mercedes had only won one race since they'd returned to Formula 1 in 2010. A lot of people said why the hell is he doing this, but it was clear that Hamilton was having issues over at Woking. Since his first title win in 2008, wins had been coming but the championships were eluding him, either because of reliability, McLaren dropping the ball with upgrades or strategy, and in 2011, his personal life interfering with his racing life. So much so, he ditched his dad as his manager. Which is actually not uncommon, other sports stars and celebrities with parent managers often part ways so they can, well, have their parents back. 997 times out of a thousand, it's usually because all they talked about was work. So he went to Mercedes for a fresh start in 2013, sweet talked into the whole thing by Nicky Lauda, and it turned a move that was perceived as being a career ender into the best move any driver has ever made, ever six championships in eight years, and beating every record in sight as well as being the first driver ever to reach triple figures in wins and podiums. And ironically, those records were originally set by the guy he replaced at Mercedes. It's funny how all these things fit together, isn't it? And this is where the first parallel is drawn with Charles. He's been in the Ferrari setup for some time. He bleeds red. Well, we all do, but you know what I mean. He's Ferrari through and through. He's a bit like Jean Alesi in a way, and you'd be forgiven for dreaming up some alternate reality where the Ferrari team is a combo of him and his godfather and best friend, Jules Bianchi. Leclerc has been touted as a future champion, and when he arrived in the sport in 2018, many eyes were on him. And with his move to the Ferrari team for 2019, he might have had a win in his second race for the team, if not for a mechanical fault, only a couple of laps from the end. But he would win the Belgian and Italian Grand Prix that year, with some drawing parallels between him and Schumacher, as Michael also won the Belgian and Italian Grand Prix in his first year with Ferrari, and many were excited to see what he could do. While Vettel was spending more time spinning, Leclerc was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Silver Arrows. But in 2020 and 2021, it wasn't as rosy. Hangovers from the dodgy engine saga and the pandemic-affected season in 2020 meant that he'd scored just 98 points and finished 8th overall in the 17-race season. In 2021, he'd be seventh as Ferrari tried to get back up to the front. For 2022 though, things seemed to be back on the up, given that the rules had gone through a big reset and Ferrari and Red Bull initially were on a similar pace. He'd win the opening round in Bahrain and was regularly putting the car on the front row of the grid, but a mixture of the car being off on race pace and Ferrari strategy blunders allowed Red Bull to waltz to the title in the second half of the season. So far, this has been his best chance. But like Lewis saw towards the end of his McLaren days, it's a mixture of strategy blunders, car issues, and some driver issues. And some people will be quite sad about it because Charles is one of the more popular drivers on the grid. The ladies seem to love him, so much so they went to his house. He does seem to be a likeable guy, but likeable doesn't always translate to successful. There are others that think he's overrated and only held in the regard he's held in because he drives for Ferrari, and if you were to replace the words Leclerc has crashed in practice with Latifi has crashed in practice or Palmer has crashed in practice, people will be saying, yeah, not good enough, red flag merchant, replace him with someone better. Yeah, the car is a handful, but factoring that in is dependent on who it is driving. Leclerc or Mick crashing a twitchy hard to drive car? That's fine. But if it's Grosjean... I'm not saying that by the way, this is just stuff that I've read. Leclerc is showing a tendency to overdrive the car to make up for its inadequacies. The car has a very narrow window in which it works and both Ferrari drivers are having their own little things that go with it. Leclerc is better on the hards, Carlos on the mediums, and while the Ferrari is brilliant over one lap, the race is, well it's over 50 laps, can get all the poles in the world but it's useless if you can't convert them. 
Charles told the BBC that the car is very sensitive to wind and in one corner sometimes you can have huge understeer which goes to huge oversteer and this is not ideal to have confidence in the car. It's always an unknown whether the car is going to react well, whether the tyres are going to be in the right window. With Ferrari bringing upgrades to the next round at Imola, Leclerc is going to be hoping for some sort of miracle since the new floor taken to Miami didn't have the desired effect. Well, at least it didn't have the desired effect at that particular type of track. And with Ferrari behind Red Bull, Mercedes and Aston Martin at this point, a turnaround in fortune is going to need to come now, rather than 2024. Which then leads into the whole getting away from all of this if he wants to win a championship, which presents a whole load of issues in itself because aside from the whole good fortune thing, he needs other things to fall into place as well. For instance, when Hamilton moved from McLaren to Mercedes, Formula 1 was a year out from the 2014 regulations, which Mercedes got right. The next change to the regulations that will matter is going to be 2026 with the redesign of the power units. So assuming Hamilton stays on for next season, 2025 will be the earliest child can facilitate a move to another top team, using the Leclerc to Mercedes rumours as a base here. Because, let's be honest, is he going to want to go anywhere else? Who else will have him? Would Red Bull bid off Checo for him? Who else will be competitive? Could Aston Martin sustain the current level of performance? I mean, Alonso's probably got another year, maybe two, before he calls it quits. But herein lies the problem. Mercedes has its next guy in George Russell, and waiting in the wings for a chance at a Formula 1 drive is Mick Schumacher. Well, a return to a Formula 1 drive anyway. The competition will be there, and it will be dependent on contracts, driver status, and other things to determine whether the move for Charles ever gets done. And there's no guarantee that the 2026 engine regulations will provide a fruitful return on that gamble. But it's just the way it is with Formula 1. You look to join a team that's dominant, and when you arrive, the car isn't as good as it probably could or should be. Senna in 1994, Russell in 2022, insert another driver I've probably forgotten here. So Leclerc is in a difficult spot. A life of frustration at Ferrari where things are going to go up the swanee more often than not, or does he look at Lewis and take the gamble on the move? But there is the other case here. For every Lewis, there's five or six Ricardos. So in effect, is Leclerc trapped at Ferrari? I'll leave that for you to decide. So then, some opinions on what Leclerc can possibly do with his career. If you think I've made some good points, then like the video so I know I've done a good job. And for more stuff like this or anything else I do around here, then get subscribed if you're not already and also get that bell on so you never miss out. Massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at Patreon for the support. And if you want to help keep things running around here, then a link to Patreon is in the description, along with links to Discord, socials, F1 store affiliate, and whatever else is down there, I can't remember. Uh, gear and PC specs, that sort of thing. Well, there's super thanks if you just want to do a one-off tip. So until next time, I've been Ada Maud. Have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.